Do you have unpredictable periods? Do you ever experience hair growth on your face or your back? Or maybe you're struggling with acne. Well, have you ever heard of PCOS? Stay tuned and we'll talk all about what PCOS is and if you could have it. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Renita White, a board certified OBGYN. At this channel, we talk all about your health and how to advocate for yourself when it comes to everything, top to bottom. So from your mental health, your body, and knowing what to expect with things to come, whether it's pregnancy, fertility, and everything under the sun. So join me each Friday where I release a new episode about your body. And to stay up to date, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. All right, so let's get into it. Today we're talking about something called PCOS. Maybe you've heard of it, a lot of people have, but PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. As an OBGYN, so many of my patients come into the office asking me about this. They're asking me, do I have it? I've been told I might have it. Or I have a friend who has this thing called PCOS or PCOS. So it is very common and what I talk about all day long. So what exactly is PCOS? Well, polycystic ovarian syndrome is an endocrine condition or hormonal condition that leads to lack of ovulation. Really, it stems from the ovaries and there leads to miscommunication between the ovaries and the brain talking. So the details of it are kind of complex, but when you break it down, the ovary stores all the eggs you'll ever have and its job is to make estrogen and to help you ovulate each month so that you can get pregnant. The only way it knows what to do is when the brain sends it a signal to say, hey, time to make estrogen, time to ovulate. So with somebody with polycystic ovarian syndrome, they have a lot of extra eggs or follicles, which is where the eggs live, on the ovary. That's where the name actually comes from. Polycystic ovarian syndrome means cysts that are ovaries that are polycystic, having lots of cysts. And cyst is just the name for follicles where the eggs live. Well, each of those follicles or cysts are responsible for sending out a little bit of estrogen and it is how it communicates back to the brain. Each month, your body is supposed to recruit one of those cysts in order to lead to ovulation so that you can get pregnant. Well, basically with PCOS, the brain sends its signal of FSH over to the ovary to say, hey, I want those follicles to make lots of estrogen to help recruit one of those follicles to ovulate. But the problem is people with PCOS send out a lot more signal because there's a lot more follicles. So the message can get flooded and the brain never quite gets the message that enough estrogen is there to ovulate. So the ovary keeps putting out and putting out a little bit of this estrogen, but the brain doesn't get the signal to send out the signal to ovulate. Ultimately, people with PCOS don't ovulate because the brain and the ovary can't communicate due to this flooded signal. This can lead to other symptoms. So for one, if you don't ovulate each month, then the body doesn't know when to have a period. So for people with PCOS, Irregular cycles tend to be a big component of the condition. Without ovulation, the uterus doesn't get the signal from the ovary to say, time to have a period. Other things that can happen is the ovaries putting out a lot of hormone and they're not doing the job of ovulation, so they just transition to making more testosterone or androgens, which are another type of hormone that's made. But all that testosterone and androgens can lead to other symptoms. So hair growth, acne issues, weight issues, or difficulty managing your insulin levels, all of that can happen because of that extra testosterone that happens. So that's the basic science of PCOS. Now, what are the common symptoms of it? I kind of touched on it a little bit. Irregular periods are a true hallmark of it for most people. So without ovulation each month, you may be skipping your cycle. For some people, they're skipping it months at a time. Only get a period every 
six months or maybe even going a full year without it. For others, they just get this continuous bleeding. So it might just be a light spotting here and there. Maybe you're spotting or bleeding for over a month. Now, the reason for this is that with ovulation, you're supposed to have one big shed of the lining of your uterus when your body knows that you didn't get pregnant. But if those signals were crossed and the uterus never got that signal because there was no ovulation, the uterus just sheds lining whenever it wants to. A little bit of the lining here, a little bit of the lining there, and then you may get a, go a long time without a period and then suddenly a big downfall. So that leads to that irregularity. It's not a true full shed each month. Other symptoms can include things like increased hair growth in places you don't typically expect. So hair above your lip or on your chin, on your stomach or on your back. That extra testosterone that the ovaries are making can lead to some of these symptoms. It can also lead to things like oily skin and increased risk of acne on the face or on the back. All of this because of that testosterone. For some people who have PCOS due to these higher levels of androgens and testosterone, you can get shedding or thinning of hair along the temples or the frontal part of your head, what we call female pattern balding. And this extra testosterone can lead to that sometimes. Finally, for some people, they can deal with weight issues. So being making it very difficult to lose weight, even if you're trying really hard or easily putting on weight when you don't mean to. And a lot of this can be due to how the body is now processing different things with your body processing insulin and how your ovaries play a component in that. So weight can be a big part of PCOS. Now, people with PCOS don't have all these symptoms all the time. Some people can just have one or two. Some people can have all of it. It is possible to have PCOS and not struggle with any weight issues. And it's possible to have PCOS and only have irregular cycles, but no acne or hair loss. So how do you know if you have it? Well, it all starts with the criteria we use to diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS, as I said, is a hormonal or endocrine condition, but there's this criteria that we use called the Rotterdam criteria to help us to know if a person may have it. But first things first, we have to make sure that there's no other causes that are leading to these symptoms that could be the cause rather than PCOS. So this is what we mean when we say it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Once we've taken everything else off the table, that's how we know, okay, this could be PCOS. So what is that criteria? Well, there are three things that are on the criteria and a person with PCOS has to have at least two of those three to meet criteria. So one of them is an irregular cycle. So as I mentioned before, a period that comes and goes when it wants to, irregularity, may not have it for a long time or just have this constant bleeding. Another criteria is clinical signs or blood signs increase blood levels of testosterone so you can test your blood to check for your serum and free testosterone levels to see if they're higher than what's expected for you or you can present with symptoms of it so as i said acne hirsutism which is the term for increased hair growth in places you don't expect or female pattern balding another criteria the third of this is the look of polycystic ovaries. So an ultrasound can be done to evaluate the ovaries. And when you look at the ultrasound, you'll be, your doctor will do something called a transvaginal ultrasound where the probe is placed inside the vagina to take a look at the ovaries. And that way, when they look, they'll be able to see how many follicles or those little cysts are there. Generally, polycystic ovaries have a specific look to them. They tend to be very crowded with these follicles. I usually say they look like a chocolate chip cookie filled with lots of chocolate chips. And they sometimes have this pearl look to it, string of pearls look. So around the edges of the follicle, you'll see all these little follicles. So if somebody has two out of three and have been ruled out for any other conditions, that tends to be how you know that you may have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So think about it. It can look different for everybody. Some people may have irregular cycles and just the polycystic ovaries on ultrasound but it's possible to have a predictable cycle 
but have the elevated testosterone symptoms or levels with the polycystic ovaries. So it's very important that you work with your healthcare provider to go through this evaluation to see if you could have PCOS. As an OBGYN, as I mentioned, I have a lot of people who come to my office thinking they have PCOS based on a conversation that they've had with somebody, whether it's another doctor, the emergency room, but really a full evaluation is needed to confirm if this could be what's going on. I also have a lot of people who come to my office who assume that they have it or are just okay with having an irregular cycle, but it can be very important to know why your cycle is irregular and what's going on because there can be consequences to PCOS. So what happens if you have PCOS? Well, for one, those with PCOS can have a difficult time managing blood sugars due to insulin resistance. Insulin is something that your pancreas makes in order to help bring your sugar levels down when you get an influx of carbohydrates and sugars in your body. Those with PCOS may have insulin resistance, which means your body's working extra hard in order to bring those sugars down. And by doing that, they make more and more insulin, but your body's not responding to it as much as it should. This in itself can increase different risks, like increased risk of diabetes, difficulty with weight, and worsening PCOS type symptoms. And in general with PCOS, those who have it can sometimes have consequences down the line. So PCOS patients may experience an increased risk of things like high blood pressure or high cholesterol down the line. Infertility or struggling with pregnancy can be an issue because if you're not ovulating each month, then you may have a hard time knowing when to get pregnant or that egg being available for the sperm to come meet it to get pregnant. PCOS patients can have an increased risk of miscarriage. And even more scary, those with PCOS are at increased risk of uterine cancer, specifically cancer of the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus. And the reason for that is because if you're not shedding that blood from the lining each month, that lining can just be growing and growing and think tumors grow and grow and grow. So it increases the risk of what we call hyperplasia, which is overgrowth of the lining that can sometimes lead to uterine cancer. So not to scare you, but PCOS is something that is very common. About 10% of the population deals with it, but it's something that can be managed and worked with with your doctor. So if you think that you may have PCOS, you're dealing with irregular cycles, struggling with acne or hair growth issues, or trying to get pregnant and notice that you're having a hard time, this is a reason I want you to check out your doctor to get an evaluation and see if it's happening to you. Now, one more thing. There are other conditions that can mimic PCOS. It's very important to make sure that these aren't the things going on, so that's part of the workup. So other hormonal conditions like thyroid disease, elevated prolactin, which is a hormone that comes from the brain but affects breast milk production, or increased cortisol levels due to certain conditions of the adrenal, these can mimic PCOS. Also, other things can cause it, like certain medications can lead to irregularity of your cycle or acne issues. So it's very important that this is evaluated to make sure that those aren't the things going on. So if you think that you may have PCOS or you're presenting with some of these symptoms, what can you do? For about three to four months, keep a calendar of what's happening with your cycles and what symptoms you may be experiencing, what medicines or foods you may be have in your body over that time period. And then if you're struggling with weight issues, start working on diet, exercise changes, but keep an eye on if you're struggling, having a hard time. So you can come into your doctor's office with a list of information about what you've been experiencing over this period of time. From there, you guys can work together to start this evaluation to see if you have PCOS. Now, I hope this was really informational for you and stay tuned for another upcoming video to talk about what you do when you have PCOS, how we treat it. Thanks again for listening. And if you like what you heard, don't forget to like and leave a review. If there's other things that you're interested in hearing about, let me know. Comment below or send me a message at hello at renitawhite.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. See you next week.